be an exchange of something else, not for money, the ethical So these kind of things are uh, so we are not a governmental uh, organization that uh, sees to support uh, marginalized teenagers actually go from 12 to 17. Um, we intend to cure trauma through uh, communal, communal co-living and through workshops and education. Mm -hmm. It's some camp project for teenagers. Uh, all the activities uh, we share are, are ecological, educational, and uh, social, some kind of way. Um, the ingredients for our uh, uh, is so funny. <laughs> community during the summer camp will be provided from uh, local farmers uh, and uh, uh, the meals will be plant-based. Uh, we will make it happen, we hope so, in Svaganya. Uh, that will be the region in Italy that the camp will be placed. Um, also, we plan to ask the permission from the municipality to take maybe some space, public space like middle or some kind of land that would be suitable for uh, making the camp work. Uh, to the implementation of uh, various activities and workshops, education, uh, we will try to help uh, those teenagers, parents, younger people to uh, develop some kind of sense and responsibility and to make, maybe give them hope and to give them uh, some, um, some steps on how to, uh, how to uh, be better for themselves and for the rest of the planet and environment. Thank you. <laughs> Why do we want to do so? Uh, we think that uh, generally uh, our life is, uh, has really uh, fast uh, rhythm, so we would like to have, uh, and we cannot uh, really connect with the nature, so the reason why we want to do this is a uh, huge disconnection with nature and uh, our roots. And uh, also because we think that uh, these uh, days more and more people uh, become uh, uh, more institutionalized, uh, especially teenagers. And I think that uh, we think that uh, the system generally is not really working. Uh, our main goal is uh, to cure trauma, to raise teenagers' awareness for ecology and sustainable life, and uh, to empower their, uh, out their autonomy and uh, uh, become responsible of their own lives. Uh, however, also to learn how to collaborate and empower their creativity. Yeah. We have some uh, common values, which is um, uh, recreating the, the ways and the terms of uh, coexistence together. We are having um, an a species of course philosophy, uh, and not teacher-pupil way of teaching, which is a student-oriented way of um, approach of uh, teaching. Um, we have several roles and responsibilities of every day, and we have direct involvement of participants. So those people, these teenagers that have lost the whole of their, um, um, how would you say, it's more like with uh, um, teenagers that they have mostly some uh, criminal uh, records from the past, so we're trying to get them a way to re, re found refine their way of, their way in uh, society. Um, so, like you said, the target groups 
first would be the teenagers. These are from 12 to 17 years old. They are locals for now. For the first year, we want local. Maybe later we go regional, national, and maybe um, European Union. Union sorry. Um, they are from underprivileged, marginalized families and environments. Um, we would like to collaborate with a municipality, um, first Pagania municip municipality, local businesses and organizations, and uh, workers like uh, local workers that would help us uh, with the kitchen, with the cleaning, and everything. Um, and spe uh, specialists like social workers, psychologists, and artists. Um, and we would like to connect with other NGOs and social centers that work in this, these areas. Okay, so we came to the funding. Uh, the first on our list would be European Union, Erasmus programs, other NGOs, collaborations. It would be good to collaborate with other NGOs because um, uh, with working and connecting to NGOs, that has similar values and visions. Uh, we promote the same social values and civic goals. Also, uh, we were thinking in when we spoke about funding, also to ask the state for funding in order to minimize the costs in the future for professional health or treatment and therapies. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we would like to have uh, some activities and some workshops with uh, the kids in order to reintegrate them. Uh, these activities, as you can see, are uh, like uh, jam marmalade making and uh, soap making, uh, some art projects of bread and uh, clay projects. Uh, we also uh, learning how to coexist uh, with animals uh, and uh, care about them. Uh, one of our basic uh, outcomes is that we will have a garden that uh, the local community can also uh, contribute to this. And uh, what else we would like to do is to ask for help from our friends, our new friends, Carlito and Cusar, to have some drum performances <laughs> and creating musical uh, forests, uh, like uh, creating uh, music from, uh, the, um, from natural, uh, natural sounds. We, sorry, we present <laughs> you because I th we think that uh, this is a kind of uh, therapy while also having some bad watching and think this kind of stuff. Uh, we would also like to um, have la something like an exchange market uh, where uh, the, the students, our uh, uh, people, uh, will. Uh, somehow exchange their products, or, or, or if they like so, if they would like so. I like uh, to have uh, orange juices made and exchange uh, an orange juice for uh, example with uh, some colors where uh, people can uh, give back something that uh, the kids want and uh, this will be something like an exchange situation. So our impact would be mainly on the local community. We want to raise awareness and compassion to traumatized teens. Um, and we would like to spread the connection that uh, we people have with the nature. Um, maybe participants that will join our camps can later share this with their friends, their peers, and yeah. And also we want to encourage uh, use of the zero waste and sustainable products, and we want definitely to support local businesses, so we have in our minds the wine groups, and can be also participating in our activities. And artists and workers, um, cooks, educators, specialists in their field, such as uh, Sally and Carlo, psychologists. Yes, psychologists also, because also in long term we have um, uh, in mind to bring also children, actually teenagers, um, with special needs, handicapped or whatever. And so we want definitely some more specialists in the future. That's all.
create a connection with animals, but we want to uh, teach the teenagers to be mindful with the animals and, for example, adoption of the animals, because there is also a systematic issue with that. Yes, there, there uh, has to be some certain rules uh, on how to um, uh, how to consciously uh, take care of animals, but it's not only give them food, give them that. Uh, the dignity is what we have to give to those animals. Salut. Yeah, the with the trauma. You can also do horse therapy. Uh, there's another name for this, but it's like uh, more effective than many of the therapies, and then it is good for the people who are resisting the convenient therapy methods, mm -hmm. and also the dog dog related therapies and stuff. It is really expensive to get therapeutic horses, and it's really hard regulations. But uh, there is a foundation called Trauma Research Foundation and they are supporting this kind of ideas if it is well established and giving money also in the kind of, uh, United States but they have connections in, in Europe as well also you can get shitloads of volunteers for this kind of stuff because uh, it's like the young people in the psychology schools so and stuff they want to get involved so much so it's like there is a good amount of volunteer possibility, volunteering possibilities in that kind of sense and um, yeah I think uh, the, if you can arrange the animal part and the therapy part and all these things it can get really big like in a, in a trauma through treatment perspective if I can add something on that <laughs> we, we had in mind that we have an explicit philosophy so uh, riding horse because I think it's not riding it's they not use riding. wild horses like you you cannot have a horse that is for riding, mm -hmm. they have to be wild, they have to be not trained as a riding horse, so it's like, it's quite difficult to, but there is like, some camps like this in, in Spain, and it's also ecological because you don't use an animal, you just have the animal, that's the, the, the case, so the horses are super sensitive animals, and yeah, they, they, there is a lot of, a lot of data about these things, and uh, yeah, it, it doesn't have to be horse, like there's like mm -hmm. pet therapy kind of uh, most of the cases. But if you, uh, I mean, it's, it is really helpful, really mm -hmm. effective. Also, because you said about volunteers, we said that maybe we can have in the first year volunteers, but after definitely we're going to have like workers. If we're going to have the funding like 50,000 or whatever, only for two weeks per summer and some workshops during the year. If you're volunteering to come, you're gonna get there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I think I was first. Um, I think that you identified a very real issue which needs to be addressed, and your project is like very well made in terms of like activities and so on. But I have a question in terms of like uh, safer space policy, because you're dealing with very fragile people, where you know like have all these problems and things can e escalate. So. What would you do to like create like a safe environment for everyone? In in that case, uh, that is where other NGOs mm -hmm. can drop in. Oh, that's not a specialist here who are invited. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so. we will also have some uh, specialists like uh, psychologists and social workers that can help us with uh, this. Uh, yes. I, I have a question about the target group because I didn't really well under, understand like because for, first you talked about um, underprivileged and marginalized teens but then also about teens with mental health issue or something like this and I didn't really understand if it was goes more towards or both or if it's open also to teens and in which case how do you define the privileged and marginalized the teen in this case like lower income people or what like immigrants uh, I don't know I, it's not clear to me you have already somehow responded uh, <laughs> but uh, what we said about uh, mental health issues is that uh, it is a goal that we would like to achieve but uh, maybe in, uh, some years later that we will be more certain about our uh, project uh, yes, we are uh, aiming to this kind of people that you said, vulnerable, uh, vulnerable marginalized groups, like uh, low-income uh, 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 
kids with uh, from one single parent uh, families and uh, migrant uh, students too. Yes, and also for mental health issues. Uh, when we say trauma, I think we're referring more than uh, um, <coughs> teenagers that they had like criminal record and that already left a trauma. You know, it's not uh, that I think we, we thought in the beginning that mental health issues. Yes, but, the but also the, the kids who have some kind of uh, not criminal, but some kind of record, like they're already getting some uh, psychiatric help. And maybe do they need some practical uh, involving, socializing, and doing such activities? But like, how do you reach these people? Like, how do you say, oh, it's a camp for people who are like, Good question. <laughs> like, how do you find people that need this kind of help? Last question. <laughs> um, through through. Um, Organizations that work with social social work, social programs, or yes, we would like to collaborate and approach uh, initially NGOs and the social centers that work specifically with these uh, people. So we would like uh, to go there and present uh, them our ideas. So uh, our uh, groups are uh, almost already fixed, let's say, because we we are targeting them. We present only their our initial idea, and then through the years, maybe if uh, the project is going well, we will uh, open up a little bit our target group, like mental health uh, issues, and uh, but this is a long-term <laughs> process. Good. Yes.
as we are all here to make it a better place for ourselves. So this is also the aim of this app. So I guess, um, sorry. Yeah, we would have some, ma some main uh, features that are um, educational and that are uh, for them to help people network. So the educational part would be um, to actually show people how to organize their own gardens. So for example, we have a broccoli and we have to find which plant goes next to the broccoli. So <laughs> that would be like the main premise of that. Then after, after that, they can go to their community section and talk to other people and see who is also interested in that. They can also have uh, information about the workshops, about any news that they want to read, any information that they want to find, and so on. I might be uh, missing something, but we'll get to that later. And so the, this app would be majorly for people from 25 to 68 years old. <coughs> Um, so the founding, the founding will be done by, we will raise crowdfunding uh, campaigns and maybe that's a way to start, like we will make some videos and start by that. Uh, we will also apply for any EU green application founding that we can find, like for example, someone told us about Horizon. Um, yeah, we will um, cooperate with eco-friendly companies like uh, Ecosia and we will advertise them for money. <laughs> they will also help us fund that. They will do that. Yeah. Um, and also we will reach out to permaculture organizations for networking purposes, exposure purposes, and helping in general. And the app will have um, a part when, where you can set whichever plant you want, as Jana said. And then it will have a part which will have um, different people interested in permaculture based on proximity, not exact location, but proximity. Um, and it will have also a third part, which will be an open forum to share news, share events all around the world about permaculture, maybe youth programs or whatever anyone wants to share. That's the basic idea. We hope we had more time to make more, but an important part of this is yeah. that we about the whole uh, information that we're gonna provide, uh, where it comes from, we. Have, uh, we got to know about this uh, um, uh, site that's called the PFAF, uh, Plans for All for our Future. Plans for a Future, sorry. And uh, the idea is that we use uh, their database as uh, a way to, like, uh, as a base pretty much, so that uh, we can then uh, expand also from that point because they already have a lot of knowledge already accumulated. And that would make, uh, I guess, the process uh, way easier. Then, to collaborate with them, we thought about like, first of all, uh, the main focus is on giving them, uh, giving them exposure. So we take their database, but it's still uh, like uh, it's on our app, but it's like uh, hosted hosted by them pretty much. Yeah, the green part. Where yeah. yeah, and uh, about hosting, yeah, we were talking also that. Uh, like uh, when we are talking about like servers and apps and stuff like that, there is uh, behind it a lot of like um, thoughts for like where are you gonna host your server, how are you gonna make it uh, more eco friendly as uh, as eco friendly as possible, and uh, well, since we were talking about Ecosia because of that, because Ecosia can uh, help us hosting the like uh, information and uh, have the database. Does anyone use Ecosia instead of Google? Yes. Yeah. yeah? It says like it um, plants every hundred or I don't know how many searches, it plants a tree. Mm -hmm. So it's an eco-friendly platform. <coughs> so we would definitely be part of that. Yeah, like the idea is when you search for a plant or something, it works like, it, like with Ecosia. So like, it's like you're putting something in the search engine of Ecosia. And that would mean planting a tree as well. 
Um, we also skipped uh, the part where the, of the people we are going to employ um, because there are still a lot of things that have to go behind it. So, like the developers, the graphic designers, people that maintain the app, people that um, moderate chats and stuff like that, so that kind of also have the security in, in control. And the idea was to, uh, as much as possible, try to involve marginalized people as much as possible because uh, since it's a very also technical field we want to try uh, to use it as a way to also teach people something but we definitely also need to some uh, people that are very experienced so uh, it would probably be the case that we are going to like uh, resort to like universities or okay and uh, yeah that's what uh, yeah. so it's basic because as you said it's a very technical thing so students could be the ones who are going to develop the app and, um, yeah, supervision by some yeah. people with experience. And also one last thing, um, at, at the first glance we said that it would be around a two-year project for phase one, one yeah. and a half, maybe two. A year and a half uh, is about the time that we would need to develop the whole thing. Uh, that includes educating ourselves, finalizing the project, finding fundings, um, and actually making the app, and then of course publishing it and um, and promoting it to the world. It's fun, right? Yeah, what, what is broccoli? So there are these ways of planting it. 
but it's more focused on the traditional way of doing it, not on the. And it's free. What? It's free. free. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Well, well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, about the <laughs> just to elaborate a bit and maybe make it more clear. Um, people will find other people that are interested in the same stuff uh, based on filters and proximity and they can help each other and it will make a better network of people and hopefully a better community locally. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, I think the networking thing of your app should be given a lot of emphasis. Education and permaculture has been very much developed the last years and there's many different projects going on that we don't know about it and they are right now on a development phase but I haven't heard something about networking and it's actually a very real problem because many people in the permaculture world also don't use Facebook like me and we don't want to be associated uh, with a big social network because actually it's a mass information that we don't care about many times mm -hmm. so connecting with people that are very like-minded and actually hear about news and stuff that actually you care about like I found this way to grow this stuff and then you know like all these freaky things that actually we only care about and it's, it's hard to do it with, without not being connected also finding people that are interested for workshops we have to use Facebook all the time so yeah it's actually a real problem mm -hmm. the networking of perma people yeah. We would also uh, put a lot of focus on the permaculture organizations we can, which can help us find interest, people who are interested in that. So we will have a good community of actually interested people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering about uh, when you have this kind of community and the network, uh, how to organize and harvest the interaction and information shape. So for example, if I can search the forum or your platform only on the word Fagan, so that I find everywhere the Fagan is mentioned, or everywhere when someone mentioned uh, mulching, or anywhere when someone mentioned so, and also about harvesting that. If there is uh, some interesting information shared in the community, how do community managers see that and somehow map that and somehow save it because in forums it's everything is everywhere. So I would think of this harvesting part and maybe the, the search part uh, a lot because well, it's so mm -hmm. the search part uh, will be managed by keywords like uh, I'm not uh, an expert in coding but um, as I've seen in other uh, pages uh, we could be able to do that for and yeah. And we want to do that. It's something that we've thought of. But um, we haven't yet uh, thought about the highlighting news. We don't know. We, we just haven't thought about it. It's but a I very guess technical thing to make everything be uh, user uh, to put everything into one app. So it's a long process to develop. But those are the issues that we will definitely be. Maybe. The basics behind the highlighting are like, uh, as you, like, it's about the location. So if you, uh, when you are posting something, it, it, I uh, like uh, thinking about it. What it would uh, need is like the location. So you mentioned like Fagania, or uh, when you post something, it gives uh, the location of you can choose where to put this like kind of thing. So when people see the where it is in fifty in fifty in a radius of fifty kilometers, where is this thing going on? And then it's like on YouTube, there are hashtags and stuff like that, but it, it's a fixed amount of things, not just uh, you can put any kind of hashtag. So it's like uh, it, it helps giving better visual ability of the product. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, we are in Star Change Inc. Um, and yeah, like why we started this journey? Because we are fed up as uh, young people to be stigmatized as, you know, uh, the people that don't engage. How many times have we seen this or have we heard this? No, like, 
oh, you don't care about uh, environmental issues, about society, about political stuff. Do you relate this with me? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> How, like, I've been hearing a lot of times, like, oh, you are always in the social media, super individualistic. This, you relate this with me? Yes. Okay. So, so this is like our our main um, strife or strike that we want to show uh, to the society how this is not true. How, uh, yeah, like. Above all, we are the generation that is going to assume all the uh, environmental consequences that previous generations haven't uh, had a cause, no? So we, we wanted this uh, project to be, through art, our main vehicle to transform um, uh, or to democratize uh, certain values such as ecofeminism, social ecology and agroecology. And how we are gonna do it? Like, like later, the, we will explain deeper. But um, in a super accessible way, uh, uh, reappropriating from uh, public spaces, which are the streets, and uh, making some um, stencils, which really is um, uh, easy to to replicate. And, and yeah, my colleagues are gonna be uh, explaining deeper. <laughs> So, how do we do it? Like we said, we do like stencils. The stencils will be like the design of the stencils will be in our um, in our Instagram and on our website, and they will be down. You can download them and you can just print them out, and you can do your get some cardboard from I don't know where and just get a cutter or a scissor and just cut it out. It's really, really easy. You just need cardboard, uh, scissors, and, and a spray bottle. And so it's something that we want to spread and everywhere, <laughs> basically. And we s will start from our friends. So from you, for example. And we will give like, uh, we will spread this idea to like, um, in our movements and the people that we know and through our social media campaign. So when people see these symbols on the street and they see the start, um, the start uh, thing, writing, <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, they can search it up on Instagram and they will see what it's what uh, it is, and they can repli replicate it. So it will spread all over um, the world, maybe. <laughs> and yes, so it's accessible to everyone, even because we decided to make, um, to have the, uh, the stencils with some um, quotes of the people that we are um, that we are drawing, and the quotes will be in every language, so it's will it will be accessible to everyone. So if you do it in Italy, it will be the quote will be in Italian. If you do it in Serbia, the quote will be in Serbian. Yeah. Or you can mix it up. Or you can mix it up if you want to bring some Slovenia to Spain. I mean, yes, <laughs> uh, this is the how. So yeah, possible obstacles. We're talking about um, communication campaign and something that uh, has to be spread mm. to function because the more it's viral, the more it's impactful. Because we want to break the wall of eco chambers in environmental um, discourse, and we want to bring topics that for us are really important to spread because they uh, challenge and um, question the capitalist system. So when we hear about um, uh, environmental issues by companies and uh, just uh, corporations, they just talk about being green and reducing waste, but they never, never question what is causing that. So maybe uh, if it becomes viral, it can be like those concepts can spread more, and it will be easier for us to I don't know make a revolution. I don't know. But we, of course, we have possible obstacles, and uh, one of them is not reaching enough people on social media. 
Uh, as I said, it's a project. Hmm? Oh, you, can, you have to follow us, by the way. We're going to have um, We're going to force you to. <laughs> you have to create an Instagram if you don't have it and follow us. So, um, yeah, it's a project that has to be widespread. And how do we do it? First of all, as Sophia said, we can spread the, pro the, um, the project uh, in our local physical community and we can talk to people that we know that are in movements, we can cooperate, for example. I will go back in Bologna and talk about it uh, with the art group of Essential Rebellion because we can make some uh, joint action and this is also going to um, uh, generate some uh, more media coverage. And uh, so this is one uh, possible solution. Another problem could be that the project can take some time and effort and not everybody can do that. Uh, but uh, we also thought that maybe this is our perspective because we worked on this. Uh, but other people are gonna have ready, um, like uh, the, the stencils are gonna be ready for, like just to be printed out. So it's a relative problem. And uh, with time, as the project becomes more solid, we can also find other actions that are even more accessible. Um, so yeah, those are two problems. Um, talking about the positive things, uh, um, what would help us? could be, uh, first of all, spreading the call to action, as I said, in local communities, uh, other social networks. For now, we just have uh, Instagram and we're gonna work on the website, but maybe um, being on Twitter and um, just other social medias, since we want media coverage, would be great. On Mastodon. Uh, hmm? on Mastodon. Anyone knows Mastodon? <laughs> it's an open source social media, it's not co-opted. Great. But no one is there. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing could be contacting famous street artists uh, and get featured by them. Uh, maybe have them uh, make uh, even more beautiful stencils uh, so that um, they can be even um, cooler. And um, once the project has some following and it's uh, more solid and uh, we have already a lot of actions. We can also contact um, um, brands of like um, spray bottles. Oh, fuck. Um, okay, we can. Uh, I'm sorry. We can contact projects uh, of uh, spray bottles so that um, we can get like coupon codes uh, to encourage people and economically help them to buy maybe eco-friendly spray bottles instead of uh, <laughs> bad ones. So yeah, yeah. In the next two three weeks, we gotta fina finalize a bit the style of the page. We already have the Instagram. We have the first post. We're gonna put the second post with this video on the how to make it. Third post with our purpose and our mission to spread like ecology, social ecology, and all this. Ecofeminism, ecofeminism. We want to be inspired also to put more icons. So if you have ideas and suggestions, please feel free, upload anything. And we can put one of your faces as well. <laughs> And this is in the next two, three weeks. So if you finalize a bit the style and start actually doing the, the graffitis <coughs> already in Barcelona, in Bologna, you were saying a bit everywhere. Uh, I don't know if we have the right to make the first one in Pagania. We have to see, maybe not. Maybe it's like the Matrava. Who did permission? Um, in oh, like, in the, in, the next two, <laughs> in the next two, three months, um, we want already to have the graffitis in different parts of Europe and start uh, expanding through more networks, uh, like Extinction Rebellion, as she was saying. In six months, we will do a checkpoint and see how it's going. And if we stop, because you always slow down, no? you start like, yes, and then it's a bit, it slows down. So in six months, we get back to it and, and try to give another push, maybe do more actions, maybe change the style. Uh, basta, basta. The so it's very easy, like, and the best part of it is like we are actually gonna make it. Be a star start driving. Changing. Start changing. Okay. Start on Instagram changing. And the question is questions. Uh, no question. Oh. This is amazing. Yes. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> So you want to do this, uh, people to do this legally or illegally? It's civil disobedience. It's oh, okay. illegal. Yeah. illegal. Illegal. It's the appropriation of public spaces. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you think uh, people maybe sharing on the Instagram or stuff? If you, I don't know, tag them or something like, is there a way to, I don't know, like 
or the identity of people that do not want to be recognized as such, or if there is any danger of being like found if you do some actions? No, lawyers. No, uh, because <laughs> we don't have to show the face. Yes, but you can find the people. It's true that if you tag someone or someone posts, then it can be found on Instagram. Yeah, but uh, like it's also true that you if you don't post a, a video of you <laughs> making it, but that's yeah, the thing. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. You can just like post the graffiti. They can't they can prove that it's you that you've done it. So mm -hmm. then if the <laughs> we're the ready faking out to the whole Perfect. Yeah, yeah we're really trying to figure out how to fuck that. But then I But then I <laughs> when can you do a workshop in projecting about this and bring the stencils? Whenever you can. In two weeks. It is in two weeks. Okay. Yeah. So there, I will provide the Another base, you bring the stencils. Yes. Okay. Yes. You can do it inside. Oh. The message, you mean? Yeah, the, the quotes. Message. For now, we have three quotes. Do you want to see them? No, I don't. Here, <laughs> you have Fukuoka. Fukuoka is saying, <laughs> There is no time in modern agriculture for a farmer to write a poem or compose a song. Which is, yeah, because it talks about natural farming. Well, <laughs> but Narashiva, <laughs> but Narashiva is saying, Control over seed means control over our lives, our food, and our freedom. And Bukchin, we haven't chosen yet. So we are open to suggestions also. No. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I know that like the scope is to be legal because uh, it's more easy, easily to uh, to uh, distribute and apply, you know, like in public space. But in terms of the outreach, I mean, this would be a really nice campaign uh, for uh, making raising people awareness, but. Uh, in collaboration with institutions, you might have a bigger outreach, you know, like for instance, like La Via Campesina, which is dealing oh, with sure. all the yeah. topics, you know, si. I mean, they have to, they have to operate in the legal framework, so they, I mean, the cooperation with institutions, uh, I mean, like using the public spaces which, which are allowed for mm -hmm. graffiti, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it is, uh, uh, the illegality gives you possibility to, to make the sense in everywhere, you know, but in terms of making a bigger outreach, uh, also cooperating with this issue, and maybe influencing public policy, reaching you know decision making people and stuff like that, that is like the ultimate goal of the campaign, right? So I mean, just thinking in this context of legality and illegality, it, it has its uh, pros and cons. Illegal has its pros and cons, while legal has also its own pros and cons. So it's a, it's a thing, you know, just to think about. Where do you want to go with this campaign, and where do you want? How many people do you want to reach, and which means and methods? Thank you so much for this point because also is, um, I think that this is important to from the grassroots movements to canalize them through more uh, uh, like the, the other movements that are more into institutions in order to transform public policies, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. So it's nice to to have this not as a isolated atomized action, but in order like to integrate it in these already existing bodies who are transforming already existing into institutions. Yes, yes, I mean La Via Campesina is also a grassroots uh, network, but it's also operating on in a high level discussion uh, mm -hmm. and negotiations with uh, decision making people. So I'm just telling you, I always have to be aware that it, you know, to influence uh, on a bigger level, mm -hmm. you have to cooperate in some way with the yeah. institutions. Even mm -hmm. we don't want it, you know, we don't uh, feel supported by these institutions mm -hmm. and we want to change them and the way how they operate. But to start, to start dealing with this, you actually right. need to start talking with them. <laughs> uh, no matter how much you hate them or for their actions, you have to, they are, you know, people. Uh, making decisions, so it's just the context I'm giving you. Uh, I'm going to present you the Wasted House project. Um, <laughs> <laughs> our, our main vision is to build the air heaters from uh, waste materials to create uh, radical communities. Um, so, the air heater is a part of uh, bioclimatic architecture. Um, 
that is by the market architecture. It's a way of uh, building, uh, building your uh, place, your house, uh, based on uh, the local climate to create thermal, thermal comfort either on the summer, uh, during the summer or during the winter. And, uh, but blending uh, what you create into the natural uh, surroundings. Uh, so, uh, we didn't get the, the laptop. It's there, eh? Uh, Oh, no problems. No. <laughs> Technical problems. Technical. You want the picture? Brave. Or the video? Mm -hmm. The picture. Um, where to put it? Um, yeah, the, yeah. These are some, uh, some kinds of uh, DIY solar uh, air heaters. Mm -hmm. um, made from very simple materials. Yes. Okay, this is this is the one that I created in my house. Uh, surface, uh, heat uh, is trapped inside uh, this uh, structure and uh, we, we create a thermal circulation uh, because the density of the uh, warm air is different from the cold air and so we can warm up the house with a very low cost and a very um, simple um, uh, materials. materials, yes, very simple material, materials. So, um, this is the. This is our essential stealing list. Uh, the materials we need to make uh, <laughs> something like this. Uh, we just need wood. The waste. They were stealing the Yes. <laughs> wood, uh, glass or plexiglass, some uh, metal cans or uh, grids, metal grids uh, instead of uh, cans. Just a black paint, uh, a little bit of silicone, and uh, you can. Uh, if you want, you can put also fun to um, help the, keep the circulation. Uh, so the main advantages of this uh, this whole thing is uh, that uh, you reduce your uh, carbon footprint by a lot. You save money, and you you are you are feeling more comfortable because of uh, you are feeling more more comfortable um, in winter or in the summer. You can create uh, more, uh, uh, more ecological habits because you have a surplus of energy so you can create a greenhouse or something like this. And so uh, also because of uh, insulation, the insulation of the bioclimatic uh, architecture, you have less noise. Less noise. What? Less what? Noise. Less noise. Less noise. Less noise. Okay, so what is the context of, of the project? So the idea is to start this project in squads because of our involvement in two squads, one in Italy and one in Spain. Um, so yeah, we will go to, and then through Tasso's knowledge of this air heater. <laughs> so first we would go to the squad um, and ed well, first we educate ourselves, we go to the squad, the first squad would be Montegi, and then uh, we would do a workshop there, both theory and practical, and we create the first air heater, and then, because it's here, first we educate ourselves, we create the first project, and then we create this air heater brigade, we are the first brigade, but there will be more, <laughs> and then this brigade have to listen to the community, to know their needs, and spread the word and the knowledge. So the objective is to meet the basic heating and cooling needs of the community, in this case squads, but in the future also uh, other communities, to reclaim and upcycle waste, so that's why you have the essential stealing list, and to build air heaters, of course, and to create radical communities, so to spread, yeah. spread the knowledge and create bonds in the community. So the outcome is very simple, air heaters. People that know how to build air heaters, 
Uh, and we also would create a YouTube channel, the three of us at the beginning, but then slowly in other countries. And we will have the air heater brigades. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. So, as you can see, uh, the impact on the larger society would be like to raise awareness on the uh, ecological and climate crisis and also to uh, um, highlight social inequalities and the way that the system um, like provide uh, for services in a polluting way, but also to um, have free knowledge, self-organized knowledge, and also to build also radical communities that can address their needs by themselves. So, who are the targets? Who are these people with crazy stealing? Who? 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 How? <laughs> yeah, we are. We are. <laughs> 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 So it comes the listening phase because if you don't find the people, you don't build air heaters. So you have to listen, if you, even if you don't want, and we want it. So then a uh, bioclimatic expert, because probably many people have this knowledge and want to spread it, so they will be interested in this project and will uh, help us to build this stuff and also have some legal ways of getting funding, education, sharing knowledge. Um, we have political activists, obviously, squatters, anarchists, communists, whatever. Uh, who, whoever you are, you are on our side. <laughs> uh, no, I'm joking. Obviously, some, some kind of political <laughs> activists are not on our side, but I will let you guess who are them. And, uh, <laughs> uh, there is the obvious, like uh, people that are interested for whatever. Like uh, my father is a middle-aged man that don't have much to do. So maybe it will be the hair eaters with us. Founding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not uh, like uh, very institutionalized, uh, like making it uh, uh, funded by EU in its current form, also because of this fun crest in the logo. But uh, uh, you have, we have community funded by the people that uh, gained uh, hair eaters. It's a bit difficult to get uh, fun uh, funding at first, but maybe when they realize that their like, uh, taxes or the expenses for it being lower, they can give us back some, some resources in uh, money or uh, other kind of resources. Mutual labor exchange, this is very important about the brigades because we want people to get involved. We don't want to be some kind of association that go there, make stuff, and then go away. We want people to be part of the construction and to be part of the big brigade of the world. Also because this is very simple project. You don't need to be, uh, I don't know, Steve Jobs to build a reader. You just need to be a person with a bit of time and will do it. And then we have waste food events. This is a good one, but uh, we didn't quite uh, um, uh, go into this, but we collect fruit, uh, food from the city, from uh, food um, places where it is getting wasted, and because we are very proud of our dump dumpster diving tradition uh, as uh, dumpsters. And uh, yeah, we sell this food for sticky mine, for, for expanding this project. Risks. This is quite Illegal, but not like so illegal. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we are amateurs, but uh, as we like talk to each other, our squads are quite uh, pacific. They are not like uh, some kind of uh, they're, like, un no, they're not under threat or uh, police. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, we have uh, like a risk because if you steal stuff, you can get fines, but trash is pretty. Uh, not uh, like uh, valuable stuff, and we have uh, the biggest one: low participation by the people, because it's the biggest, uh, you know, problem in our, in our society right now. And we have also logistical problem: how we move stuff and whatever. So the biggest vision is we start from air eaters, 
but then we expand the services, yeah. the, the needs that we address, schooling, housing, and uh, a free life in the end. <laughs> no. so, Like 
short, short version of, of PERC into a planning and strategic documents in Serbia. For example, when you are planning the development of agriculture, you have to write some proposals, some to do some studies, some research, and to make some documents. Or based on those documents, people can work and use land in a proper way. You mean like uh, plans of development of the cities. For example, when we are want to plan how the city will will be developed, we should we have to make some maps to decide where we want to put housing, where we want to put infrastructure, where we want to put uh, commercial things. So also with agriculture, we have to decide which land we will use for which kind of agriculture. So they, because of that, we need to have in each and every country this kind of planning and strategic documents. Uh, I want basically to introduce this term and concept into all local and national documents in Serbia. I mean in all documents which are related to agriculture, uh, agricultural development and land use planning. Do you know what means land use probably? Mm -hmm. Land use way, in which way we are using some kind of land. Context. Uh, definitely Serbia has a lot of this kind of land, almost 60% of our country is under agricultural land, so we have big a big potential. Uh, but today we have unclear defined directions for the sustainable agricultural develop development in Serbia. We just generally say that we want to have sustainable uh, this kind of agriculture, but without any uh, real activities in, into praxis, without any true activities, true plans, just like uh, some kind of vision, but uh, basically we don't do anything practical. Also, we have lack of adequate policies and uh, we don't have any progressive approach in the development of agricultural activities. And also agriculture is one of the uh, one of the conditions that we have to improve before uh, we become EU, part of EU. So basically this also contribute, contributes to, to our like joining to European Union. Mm -hmm. What is outcome? The main outcome is adoption of the concept of, and the term of react regenerative agriculture into our practice basically to have official definition of this term and when for example at the faculty university or when i go to ministry of agriculture when i say this word that all people who are listening to me know what that means and that this concept has their place in our uh, state agricultural development i mean by the government so the main impact would be changing approaches in agricultural and spatial planning design. So I want basically to change approach in design how we are using our agricultural land. Uh, so the, the biggest like result would be adoption of uh, special regulation design to sustain the different three ag projects on local, regional and national level. Uh, well, based on my experience so far, I realized that when you uh, want to start some advocacy campaign, first you have to make some case study because you have to prove that your uh, thesis uh, really works in practice. So I talked with Sasha uh, and there is possibility to connect with one uh, municipality in the central part of Serbia that is very popular. Uh, that is like uh, a small municipality but uh, with a uh, significant uh, uh, share of agricultural land in total uh, area. So maybe it would be good to think about uh, doing some local strategy of this re-ag or regenerative agriculture. We, uh, today we have those kind of documents, but not uh, related with this kind of uh, uh, activities. We have some local 
strategy of rural de development, uh, local strategy for sustainable development. So uh, basically this would be uh, very similar to documents that we al already have, but more like m more clear, more uh, specific uh, uh, design to, su to sustain some concrete, uh, uh, very concrete practice. Uh, that this case study should be the baseline for the future projects because uh, when you have some case study which is already done and when you have some good results, you can show it to people who are in the positions, who are decision makers and to ask them for support and also for, for particip participating uh, in your project. Also, I want to give uh, one piece of advice. When you have to work with government, uh, of course, maybe you don't like, but sometimes you have, you also, uh, you always can go uh, and approach to them with a sentence, I know how to help you to solve this problem, and uh, for example, I know that uh, our municipality or our city has that uh, vision for the future that uh, uh, for example, agriculture should be uh, more uh, sustainable and I want to help you to fulfill your task. I offer my knowledge and time and I want to help you. So they, in, in that uh, way, they can think, okay, I, I can use this, this girl uh, or her, her organization. <laughs> in that way, I can give her some money and she will do my work. And later, I will do all, like, Placing in, in media, but for example, for me, it doesn't matter uh, which name is on, on that document or in that regulation because I want to see that in practice. I don't care about publicity, about media, about to be recognizable in the society. I want to job it done. So I like that way of approaching to, to institutions. Oh, okay, I will be quickly. So this is very complex and big thing, and this is long-term project. It's not something for one summer or one year. It takes at least two years. Benefits are obvious. I mean, we have heard that from Sasha. Improving biodiversity of rural areas, less negative impact on the environment, more efficient use of natural resources, bigger autonomy of, of, of local farmers, bigger resilience on climate change, uh, uh, greater economic uh, resilience due to diversification of products, etc. Target groups are obvious in the first place institutions because without them we cannot do this. Then ac academy like universities, professors and other experts pre produce it also because we need them for this kind of case study and also consumers because we want to attract people to support products which come for, from these kind of farms. I didn't write anything about funding because it is a big thing and I can do just that. I cannot do you must by five minutes more for okay. Okay. And this is what is the most important here. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of energy, a lot of time, and a lot of human resources. 
knowledge is also necessary and cooperation. Not cooperation what, uh, with NGOs, but also with experts, universities, and, and government. I don't have a question, but I have a comment. I mean, but we are here really mixed uh, uh, groups of people. Uh, I see that a lot of people are inclining to some, you know, non-institutional approaches and stuff like that. But I would just like to emphasize, if you really want to make a bigger change, you have to go through institutional process, which everybody hates, like every normal person has to, hates to deal with institutions. But I don't know, Minister, did you mention, but once, when you have a certain term introduced in the national legislation, like regenerative agriculture, it means automatically that the budget, national budget, will go one piece of that, will go to sustain operations that will uh, 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 introduce regenerative agriculture. So, I mean, yes, we, we hate governments, but still, I mean, this is what Milica is doing, especially in Serbia, she is kicking gas <laughs> in this, in this uh, sector. Somebody has to do it, you know? <laughs> Somebody has to do it, yeah. If you need to charge your phone. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Have you heard about us? No. I mean, we, have, we have the workshops on uh, zero waste policy. If you've you heard about it, if you want to. Do you feel bad like after the festival with, with all the ways to. Yeah, so we have those. Uh, you know, we, we, we have workshops. We have fresh movies if you yeah. want. Um, like, uh, we have local farmers who give us their products and. Uh, yeah, we do juices and pork chops and... Uh, mm -hmm. We also do... Uh, we also uh, can show you uh, soaps, you know, we have... Oh, mosquitoes! Uh, yeah. <laughs> we have also mosquito repellent that is totally, like, natural base, you know, it's basically lemongrass, so... Zero waste. <laughs> yeah. And if you're interested in our course, like we collaborate with the festival organizers and uh, we are into, like the toilets are actually, the waste uh, goes into the compost and uh, yeah, we do a lot of cool ecological like, projects and if you're interested, we always look for volunteers uh, and uh, you can get inside the biggest festivals um, and just work for hours a day with us. So yeah. can I apply now? Yeah, we also have the last day after the festival, we have a big clean-up action where we collect the garbage. So, yeah, that's a way to show yeah. solidarity. So if you want to volunteer with us, we're open for volunteers. Yeah. And we have a workshop in uh, an hour or so, right? Yes, yes, right. We, have, uh, we also, if you have clothes that you want to use, we do bags with, uh, uh, yeah, we reuse materials. Um, yeah. Yeah. We can bring you garbage, and we can um, we can find them a second life. <laughs> and the last thing we have also a uh, seed bank. So we've heard there is uh, this permaculture app, a uh, reroute or something. So you can check it actually and see how it works. You know. <laughs> Uh, every year and 
Like uh, there is around 10,000 small festivals, and we are talking about millions of people are going, and uh, millions of people are young, young people are going to the festivals, and most of the time they are quite open to new ideas and new situations because of the substances they use, but because of the, <laughs> because of the fun that they have, also like the. the they get involved with the new ideas, they meet with the new people. This is the vocational mindset. Uh, but there is a big, high negative impact uh, of the festivals to the area that they go as well. Most of the time festivals are uh, happening in the big uh, areas, uh, with like a, next to the forest, or maybe it's like some part of it is like agricultural area, or old agricultural areas. But they leave a lot of uh, waste, and also there is a lot of uh, impact through the, you know, the toilets because there's thousands of people coming together at the same time, and all the cups and all the plates that is being used. Uh, so that is like also we are talking about the big negative impact from the uh, festivals. So our actions are happening, uh, organizing three different segments. Uh, the first of all, before the festival. So uh, we have the the one idea, but it's just an idea. It's not like one one that we want to create. It's like a multipliable idea that then that the people who wants to get involved or who people who likes the nomad lifestyle and don't want to st establish in the cities can also get involved uh, fun, um, finding the funding or we we can have them finding and we will. Uh, explain them, train them on our system. So as the system goes, like before the festival, we are, we meet with the organizers, so we contact with the organizers, and then through our research, uh, we we provide them like the, where is this? Uh, yeah, we have quite a lot of stuff. Ah, yes. Yeah. So for example, we connect them with the uh, compost toilet companies or the compostable cup companies so that we just uh, play the mean and then we try to show them what are the advantages of using this kind of uh, zero waste products and on the other side um, in the we have like before the festival we also connect with the local artists because we will have an echo stage that also local artists can participate in the festival maybe they are not going to be able to play the big, big part but we also want to support the local artists, so we have a small stage that we put with the uh, with like the material that is fine, but it's like sim simple stuff. As uh, you you saw in the theater, we have like solar power bank, which is uh, in the festival. Most of the people are like uh, the phones get died, so they cannot find their friends, so they can come there and then uh, use the solar power bank, which is a, a simple idea that even can be constructed with a material bought from the Decathlon, but we want to make it a bit bigger, of course. And they, there they have to wait. While they're waiting, we can uh, talk about the local uh, like uh, permaculture, ecology, and like we just get engaged with them. So the idea goes with the discover, so they come and discover what is going on, and then they engage with us, they play with us, they get into the, uh, our workshops of creating uh, ecological material f through waste material, for example, feeling sticky in a festival, make your own ecological soap, shampoo, toothpaste, <laughs> so, and then uh, they also get, get to learn about our volunteering options, so in the before part, we also get volunteering forms and uh, the idea is that talking with the festival organizers and provide free tickets to me uh, provide free tickets to, uh, to the volunteers so that they can come work three four hours with us during the festival and join the last part organize the other volunteers for the cleaning part and they don't pay for the festival don't pay for the food all these things so we like a, a solidarity economy system we want to create. Also, for the festival people who are like uh, increasing their consciousness, they can be part of the cleaning activity in the end, as we said. And the last day, after the day of the festival, we will just organize the young people, make them beat, then uh, give them a small training about zero waste and recycling. And then we, we make this uh, event for the cleaning of the festival area and it's also good for the post-festival depression 
which is a yeah. prevent uh, we can prevent it by creating new uh, meetings through through the uh, this cleaning uh, activities. And is there anything that we didn't talk about? Like during the festival, we already explained it. We had all these crazy things and a lot of fun. And after the festival, uh, we get involved with the cleaning. Also, we get uh, in this in this time we also get contact with the uh, local waste management organizations so that the waste of the, uh, the festival area can be managed by uh, with their help so that they can take them the waste and they can sell it they can use it also as we as we talked uh, about the compost toilet companies so the festival uh, can also talk with uh, Andre told me that uh, they can talk with the local tree growers so that the human compost can be uh, used in the tree growing and all these things so it is all about uh, an idea and like finding funding is a bit complicated as uh, as we want to talk about that as well but it's all about the idea and multiplying of the idea okay i couldn't talk about funding but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> boom, 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 Yeah. I give you cars, 
and uh, we are we are they want to bring it back the electrical people one yeah and it can be part of the movement like a festival idea of the new age new age uh, lifestyle yeah and it's going to be all included as a and it's a very nice idea also for crowdfunding mm -hmm. i think yeah. it can be very shareable very likable you know and Many like of everything possible, like if you go to this festival, like everyone will donate some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Use the festival. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you maybe not. And how is that yeah. the process? I think, well, just in general, what is really important in all these activities, projects that are activism wise, is to have fun and enjoy the process. Yeah. 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 You know, just yeah. that. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> so it's good jobs to, uh, for example, with those companies to use their rewashing for our brainwashing. Exactly. <laughs> 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 it's a job. <laughs> we don't want us to brainwash. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't want to. But uh, if they create a product, ecological product, uh, we would be happy to advertise it. Like, but uh, I don't know. And anyways, like just for people to know, companies like big like Volkswagen and like that they have very negative impact are obliged to give money. Yes. And normally they create organizations and they use the money. That this is completely like, right? No, no, but this is the green one. This is what is happening in the moment right now. So like to take this money in a real conscious project is not greenwashing. It's just mm. progress. Yeah. yeah, and also half of the times you hear, I take the money and then for every half of them I plant a tree. Yeah. It's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> like planting a tree itself doesn't mean anything. The tree can die in just one day. Yes. Yeah. So they, yeah. all, they, they calculate the offset for all the years of life of the tree without knowing if the tree is actually alive. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's why the world go to the shit direction. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why we need to engage to do things ourselves with our hands and not wait from other people to do that for us. Yeah. No, we, we are the people who are supposed to do these things. Yes, it's just the small inspiration. <laughs>